Hello, everyone. My name is Simon Brand. I'm a software engineer at Codeplay um, in Edinburgh. We work on compilers and debuggers for GPUs and such. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about std optional. So my talk is entitled std optional and the M word. Does anyone know what the M word is? Monad. Yes, exactly. Don't run away yet. You can, you can leave after. Yeah, just let me speak. So um, can you raise your hand if you do not know what std optional is? One. OK, so I, I will give an overview of std optional. This is std optional. It has two states. They can be empty, or they can have a value. That's it, its simplest case. Maybe you don't think this is very, very useful. But this should be a vocabulary type. So a vocabulary type is supposed to be the canonical way of representing some kind of concept. So if I have a function which reasonably might not return a result, I can return a std optional. Maybe I return a pen. Maybe I don't return a pen. And this is a very clear way of expressing my intent. If, I, if you look at the declaration of the function, you can see, oh, this function may return a pen or it may not. And then I have an interface I can um, deal with, which will um, give me all of the information I need. And I can kind of uh, make my code very, very clear and understandable. Um, so it's, let's have a, um, a possible case of still optional. Say we have uh, a function which takes a picture, any picture, and it finds a cat. Finds a cat in this picture, some kind of computer vision thing. And we want to take this picture because everyone on the internet loves pictures of cats, right? And they have to be adorable. So we're going to take this picture of a cat and we're going to make it more adorable. We're going to add a little tiny hat. We're going to maybe add a rainbow. We're going to make it even smaller. All of this cool stuff. But the problem is all of these operations could fail. So if we take a picture, maybe it's a picture of a bird. We can't find a cat in that. This function, like find cat, is going to return an empty optional. If we can't find a good place to, to put the hat, then we're going to return an empty optional. So the problem then in our code is we say, OK, um, find cat, check if we failed. Add a hat, check if we failed. Do this, check if we failed. Do that, check if we failed. So what we're doing is we're um, interspersing all our error checking code into our actual program logic. And I'm sure you all know this is like, we don't want this. This is just boilerplate that we have to write because we want to be correct. We don't want to just like dereference an empty optional and hit UB and, and all this stuff. We don't want that. We want our code to be correct. But we also want it to be clear and understandable. So what I propose is we use monads. So I'm going to give a, not an explanation of monads, but how do they apply in this case? So I have a function. In fact, I need a volunteer. Who wants to be a function? Excellent. I also need something else. Give me that, that cup over there. Where's it? Yeah, yeah, that will work. OK, so you're a function. You take a pen, and you return this thing here, whatever that is, some placemat or whatever. So if, if, I'm, if I have a pen, I can give it to you, and you return me the value. Hey. This is, this is what we're used to in C++. We call a function, we get re a result. So what happens if, take this back. So I'm a function, I'm given an optional. So I don't just have a pen, I have either a pen or no pen. So what I can do is I can implement um, maybe a function called map. What map will do is it will take a function, such as yourself, which takes a thing and returns a thing. And it will allow me to compose these operations whilst preserving the context of my optional, so whether I have a value or don't have a value. So what map will do is, if I have a value, it will take the value out. It will give it to my, my function over here. It will take the return value, and it will put it back in, in my optional. 
if I do not have a pen, I'm empty, I'm just going to do nothing. So what this means is I can actually compose all of these operations without having to do my error checking. So I can say, I have an optional, map this, map that, map this, map that, map this, map that. And if at the start I didn't have anything, then it's just not going to do anything. If I did have a value, then it's going to pass it on, it's going to keep on doing all of these operations. So that is called um, a functor. A functor is something which um, will take a function, it will have a function called map, usually, which takes something, returns something. Um, so this is very common in, in Haskell or lots of other functional programming languages. So then the problem is, what if I have a function which takes a pen and maybe returns um, whatever that thing was? Yes, excellent, you're, you're, you're thinking ahead. Okay, so now I don't have a function which takes a pen and, um, and returns a beer map. I have a function which takes a pen. And look, this time I got a value. This time I have something in here. But maybe next time I, I give you a pen and I get nothing back. So I want to be able to compose with these functions. So what I do is I have a an empty optional, so I'm just going to do nothing because I can't do anything. But in the other case, I have a value, so I'm going to take the value out, I'm going to give it to my function, and then I'm going to get my optional back. And this is what I return to my caller. So now I can compose this. Maybe I have another function which takes this place map and returns me a uh, speaker badge or whatever. And if I got an empty one, then it will do nothing. If I got this place map, it will give me the speaker's badge. So I can just um, arbitrarily map. <laughs> I, I'm going to put this down. <laughs> I can arbitrarily compose functions which may fail without having to do any error checking and dispersed um, throughout all of my code. And that is called a monad. For, for the case of optional, it will just compose things which may fail and push all of the error handling aside. I don't have to deal with this because I want to deal with my program logic, not just like this might fail, so I need to handle this case. So this function is usually called bind in, um, in functional languages, sometimes shown as, uh, I'm going to completely forget this because I'm like, that or whatever, I can't, I can't even remember. But anyway, you, you'll bind, and in Haskell, it'll look something like that. Um, but in C++, um, I think it would more, more likely look like member functions, which you would supply on something like std optional and would allow you to compose these functions. So um, if you want to know more about these, uh, you can look at my implementation of std optional, which has all of these operations. Um, it's on and github.com slash titan llama slash optional. So you can go and have a look, play around with it. It's a complete implementation of still optional with, with some extensions to let you do this stuff. Um, you can also go and look at my standards proposal, which is probably being discussed at Albuquerque like yesterday or something. Um, but I think it's P0798. So if you go and look on the standards papers repository, then, um, then you can have a look and give me some feedback. Um, so thank you very much.